I realize that I have some uh, good news to share today, which is that uh, we have done most of the uh, difficult parts of the book. And uh, in the regular, like Rust, um, you know, things you need to know to be comfortable with Rust, uh, there are obviously lots of more super advanced things if you want to get into them. But in the getting comfortable with Rust uh, part, we have uh, we've done most of the, uh, the diff difficult stuff. The only uh, really, really tough thing to come later on is learning macros, but we're only going to do a little bit of that. Um, and of course, you don't really have to use macros if you don't want. And uh, so anyway, today's uh, type is going to be a, uh, a channel. And uh, that's why this came to mind because channel is uh, it's another concurrent type, uh, but it's uh, it's easier to use than the one we have learned before with the, uh, you know, the arc and the mutex and, you know, what, whatever you want to send using it. Uh, channel is also, um, uh, it can go over uh, multiple threads. So it has uh, send and it has sync, the, uh, the two traits that you need to safely send between threads, but you don't have to think about uh, arcs and things like that. And so you will probably find this um, uh, not too difficult and uh, you, you'll be able to see why uh, channels are pretty popular. And a channel is uh, inside the, uh, the standard library. It's inside this uh, this area here, and you can see sync is a is a clue that uh, you know it's going to be over multiple threads, and it has this MPSC, and that means multiple producer single consumer. So that's a fancy way of saying that. Uh, one thing is receiving things from a lot of sources. And uh, the best analogy is always a river. Uh, you have this, um, you have the Amazon here, and this is the uh, the single consumer. You know, everything is going into it. Uh, you know, nothing's coming out. And all of these rivers, all they're doing, uh, no matter what they do, at the very end, they are just putting their water into the Amazon, and the Amazon gets it all. So it's basically like that. So let's, uh, so let's make a channel. Um, so of course, first we need to bring this in. Well, we don't need to, but it uh, makes our code nicer. So we'll bring this in. And uh, if you look at the, uh, let's see, channel type. So the channel type is, um, you can see they're all, it makes this uh, a sender and a receiver. Uh, it uses the, uh, this channel function to do it. And all you do is you say channel, and then it'll make a, a sender and a receiver for you. And it's uh, it's all of the same type, so uh, so that is uh, pretty easy. Uh, so what you do here is, uh, and since it's making you know two things for you, it's a, it's a tuple, and you give it uh, any name you want, and we'll say sender receiver because that's easy to understand. And uh, there you go. So we have a sender and a receiver, and uh, Russ is going to say, hold on a second. Uh, you know, I don't know what we're sending and what we're receiving and it's saying why don't you You know, why don't you give it this type and You know bring in bring in, you know the receiver type and and so you can say receiver of strings or whatever But you actually don't have to do that because uh, all you have to do is say sender dot send this is the only um, only function that uh, sender has and we'll say I'm sending a five and if you do that then it goes from the sender to the receiver, and then Rust can see, oh, okay, this is a uh, this is type uh, I32, and it doesn't uh, doesn't complain anymore. So you don't have to uh, actually tell it the type, which is uh, that's that's uh, fortunate. And uh, so let's uh, let's see where is it sender receiver. So let's look at their function so or methods. So you can see sender has a send. All right, uh, receiver. Well, how does it get things? It uh, it uses receive. It looks like rec v, but it's not a v. It's uh, it's just short for receive. And uh, every time you call this, it'll uh, it'll take in. It'll receive a piece of data that was sent to it. Um, and uh, let's just uh, let's send some things, and then uh, try to receive them and see what happens. Um, these, uh, by the way, these are all results. So, uh, you know, there could be a send error and there could be a receive error. Um, you can, um, it'll still work, uh, 
well, we can receive the, the result without unwrapping. So uh, let's just print that out and see what happens. So uh, let's see, print, uh, let's see, receiver dot receive, and then see what it gives us. And then Russ is going to say, don't you want to, uh, you know, handle that, uh, that error or handle that result? And we'll say, okay, that's fine. Because, uh, we're pretty sure that's going to work and uh, maybe we would want to uh, you know have the program panic if uh, if it doesn't send uh, in the first place and you can see so it sends back a uh, or it sends this over then the receiver tries to receive it and we get an okay five so let's uh, let's unwrap this and then uh, we'll unwrap that as well and then let's uh, let's try it uh, two more times because we've sent it uh, two items, and then uh, and then we're going to try to take in uh, three and uh, see uh, see what it does. And you can see it's uh, it uh, so it does this successfully. This works successfully, and then finally it uh, it times out on the other one. And that is because uh, let's see when you use this receive function, uh, this function will always block the current thread. Um, so it's it's waiting around, assuming that something is going to come in, and it's just going to sit there until uh, as long as it can until finally you know Rust shuts down the uh, the program, or the program shuts itself down. And so there you can uh, you know if you're not sure that you're going to have something, you can change it to uh, try receive, try receive, and we're not going to unwrap here because uh, you know unwrap would. Uh, we would be opening, unwrapping an error, and uh, there you go. So instead of uh, instead of actually unwrapping it, uh, we are just uh, you know trying it out. And so you could you know do the same for here. Try receive, try receive, and instead of unwrapping, we could just uh, you know tell Rust to say you know if it succeeded or not, and uh, show us what's inside. And uh, you can see. You know this worked this worked and then the last one it just says okay there's nothing there so I'm not going to block the thread and then it um, and then ends and uh, there's no timeout so that is uh, how they work and then uh, in the next video we're going to start uh, using multiple threads